Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new to my channel then thank you so much for tuning in for your first video. If you are a retainer then thank you so much for coming back. I really 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 do appreciate it. Today's video is all about this product right here. This is the Bondi Sands Base SPF 50 Daily Moisturising Sun Cream. So as you all know I'm a huge advocate for SPF and I have been looking at for you SPF for my face. So we are going to get straight into the video. If you would like to comment, like and subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. But other than that, let's just get into it. So I've been looking for a new facial moisturiser with SPF for my face for a while. You all know I love the Asda Sun Protect Mattifying Sun Cream SPF 30. I know it's SPF 30, we do try and get SPF 50, but I'm going to be brutally honest, there's not been many SPF 50s that I like. They either make me break out, they're oily, they don't sit on the skin right, my makeup slips off with them. There hasn't been many there hasn't been any actually SPF 50s that I've thoroughly enjoyed. So that's why when I was hearing rave reviews, not just from your everyday person, but from influencers, skin specialists, dermatologists, loads and loads and loads of people had been raving about this. And so I had to give it a go. I had to. And I kept saying, I'll buy it, I'll buy it. This averagely retails for £7, but I went to Superdrug and it was on offer for half price. So I paid £3.50. That's a pound more than the Asda one that I use for an SPF 50 that everyone raves about. So I was like, well, if that's not a sign to try it, I don't know what it is. Read off what it says. It is a daily moisturising face SPF 50 plus broad spectrum UVA and UVB protection. It's water resistant for four hours. It's fragrance free sun cream lotion with vitamin E, 72 hour hydration and it's reef friendly. It's made in Australia. And on the back it says summer is here. Enjoy a sun soaked day the Bondi Sands way with our daily moisturising face SPF 50 plus sunscreen. Provide UVA and UVB protection. Our water resistant formula is gentle, fast absorbent and dries to an invisible non-greasy finish. Formulated to deliver up to 72 hours of hydration. Why would we want 72 hours when we wash our faces? I'm just saying never understand this logic. Like that doesn't make me want to purchase it. That makes me think that people don't wash their face. But anyway, it delivers up to 72 hours of hydration with added aloe vera and vitamin E to leave your skin feeling deeply moisturised. Can be worn alone or under makeup. They also then go on to say, sulfate-free, reef-friendly, and it says, if you are going to use this product, step one, shake well before use, which I always do anyway with all my products. Apply liberally and evenly to all unprotected areas 15 to 20 minutes before exposure to the sun. That's a really important thing that people need to remember when putting the sun cream on, no matter where it is on your body. Always make sure it's at least 15 to 20 minutes before you go going outside, otherwise it's not going to have absorbed in enough to give you any protection before leaving the house. And then step three is reapply frequently, especially after swimming, exercise and towel drying. Okay, so how it feels. I'm going to put some on the back of my hands. So this is what it's like when it comes out the tube. The consistency is really, really nice. So that's averagely a little bit less than what I would actually apply to my face when putting this on every morning. I put about a 10 piece size amount all over my face and neck. But if I just start to work that in there, you can see it's absorbing really, really quickly. It goes on really quick. It's very, very, very lightweight and it feels really hydrating. It feels very emollient based, really, really emulsifying sort of product. But it does feel really, really nice when you're putting it on. But yeah, it's really, really lightweight. As you can see, it's soaked into the skin really, really quickly. It has like a stickiness to it, but that's literally it. Just a slight stickiness to it. But what I can say is it is one of the most lightweight moisturisers I've used with SPF in a long time. Moving on to the formula of the product, which can be quite important as to why certain things are the way they are. I want to break down the first couple of ingredients that are in this product. So obviously Aqua is the first product that they have. But the second one is beeswax, which makes me think where the emulsion-y feeling comes from. Beeswax is a great product for the skin. You'll know that Burton Bees use it for the lips. A lot of brands use beeswax in their products. It's a really common product for skincare, lip balms, all that sort of stuff. Beeswax has some great properties for the it skin. It basically prevents the skin from feeling dry. It both conditions and hydrates the skin. It also is a great barrier for environmental stresses on the skin, which is exactly what UVA and UVB rays are to the skin. They're an environmental stressor. The so second ingredient on the list is aloe leaf juice. Now we all know aloe to be great for the skin. It's just a common 
thing that most people know. The reason why aloe is so good for the skin, it has so many different things it can do. So one of the main ones for me is an anti-inflammatory. A lot of people use it for sunburn or burns in general, cuts, abrasions. But when it comes to skincare, it's really good for anti-inflammatory purposes. So if you have acne, it'll help reduce the frequency and the appearance of acne. It's super hydrating. It can help reduce skin conditions like psoriasis and dermatitis. And it's rich in antioxidant properties to help protect the skin. So it's all in all a really good product to put in something like this. And I do think that is why the moisturizer feels so, so, so hydrating. Like my mattifying as the sun cream doesn't feel hydrating, but it feels like it's a sun cream. It feels like it's doing what it's supposed to do. And because I've gone from a mattifying one to a really moisturising one, a one that hones in all the ingredients in this, hone in on moisture, moisture, moisture. And it, that is what the rule is. When you go out in the sun, you need to keep your skin hydrated. You need to keep your skin moisturised because what can happen when it's drier is it can sound daft but it can burn more as well, I personally think. I've noticed with my own skin, it's different in the heat, the drier it is, but the more supple, the more hydrated, the more moisturised it is, it doesn't seem to burn as easy. Now, whether there's actually scientific evidence behind that, I'm not too sure. Another element to this formula is that Bondi Sands claim that this is really good with a conjun in conjunction with the Bondi Sands tannin range. Now, obviously, Bondi Sands is most known for its self-tan, so it makes sense for them to make SPFs that go with those products. I'm assuming it'll go with any other brand of self-tan, but obviously they're not gonna promote anyone else other than themselves. So I'll be honest, I only self-tan in the summer because I can catch the sun really, really easy, but my legs are like see-through. My back is one color, my chest is another, my shoulder. I'm just a mismatch of lines and colors throughout summer. So I self-tan from my neck down. I don't advise to self-tan your face. It's something I just don't do. I mean, I do dermaplanes and you can always tell the difference between people who self-tan the face and people who don't self-tan the face because you can see it coming out. You can see it coming off the skin. So I just prefer to not put it on my face. And also, I think it lies within pores. You can see a little black dot. I just don't like it. I don't like self-tan on the face. But I do tan from here to my toes. So I had some self-tan on for my birthday because I needed to even out the old body. And... This went on my neck and it was fine. It was completely and utterly fine. It didn't do anything. It didn't affect it. It's good to go with self-tan. But to be fair, I've never had a, a product not mixed with self-tan once it's on. I have never known a product once it's soaked in and been washed off for there to be an issue. And maybe it's more to do with when you have got it fresh on and you haven't washed it off yet that you can then apply this on top and it won't hinder the appearance of the way the false tan develops. One of the negatives I do have with this SPF, and this is not just this SPF, I have this issue with most. My eyes couldn't make up their minds whether they liked this. I could go days without it being an issue and then the next minute it'd be an issue. Like my eyes just don't like sun cream. They just decide when they like it and when they don't like it. So I'll be brutally honest, if I was to put this on with a full face of makeup, when I was doing it, I was really being careful around the eye area, ensuring that it didn't go too close to the waterline. But that's something I would do with any SPF when I'm wearing it with makeup because of the way my eyes can react and I can't afford for there to be a watery eye because I have that type of skin that when I get a watery eye, it becomes patchy and becomes sore and chapped and I can't cover it and it's just one big disaster after another. So I've always been quite careful about where to place my SPF around my eyes. But yeah, that was the one negative I have got towards it. My eyes just didn't, just didn't work well with it. Sometimes, and then sometimes it was fine. So it's, you know, that happens Let's with all. Let's talk about the filters in this product. I'm not going to get too sciencey with it. I am, I understand the science levels, but I'm not a scientist and I'm not a full-blown dermatologist and everything to pass that information on. I don't want to ever get anything wrong. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with the science level of it but this product does have a UVA and UVB protection. Now, the UVA and UVB are two different things because UVA is the rays that age you. They're the ones that make you get fine lines and wrinkles and brown spots and all that sort of stuff. It's more the aesthetic. I call it the UVA aesthetic. It basically is what your skin would look like. 
The UVB rays, the ones that can burn you. UVA and UVB rays cause skin damage and therefore that can lead to cancerous problems. So that's why you're meant to have UVA and UVB protection in your sun cream. Now, back when Boots decided to first start their own sun cream, they created this. So they created a star rating and that's where this, this comes from. Boots actually started that. They put star ratings on the back of their sun cream and that's where all that evolved from. Now, I always shop for a five-star UVA rating because I just think, why not? Why not try and protect it in both ways as high as possible? That's why SPF 30 is great. SPF 50 is the most desired, but SPF 30 is not the end of the world. That is actually a really good. It's only 1% lower. So it is still good to have SPF 30, but I also want to have five-star UVA protection. This one actually only has three, which means it's good, it's not fantastic, and it's not bad. So it's just bang smack in the middle. I was a little let down by that, I'll be brutally honest. I wanted this to have UVA levels five star. I thought that's what it would have. But maybe that's just because I've got used to always picking up a five star UVA. Maybe some people just don't think it's as important. I don't I don't know. I just thought it was recommended to get five stars so it was i was very taken aback that this product only had three stars i'll be brutally honest and i was a little bit let down by that i prefer to have a five star rating my asda spf 30 has a five star rating my sun creams that i use on my body all have a five star rating so yeah i'd like to know why it only has three like what's the one product that makes that decision and that's what i'm saying when i don't want to go too scientific with it because i don't know all of the ins and outs of SPF, I know I know like the basics. So I would like to know what products, and if you do know the answer, leave it down below for me because you know there's always a lot of information when you Google something. But nonetheless, it is still UVA and UVB protected, and it's a broad spectrum version of it. So yeah, it's still good for it. I just would have preferred that it would have been a five-star rating on the UV. Moving on to fragrance. This is a fragrance-free product. So when you get this, this is just going to smell a bog-standard sun cream. Now, I read some reviews. People were like, it smells like sun cream. Like, it, why has it got the smell of sun cream? Because it's sun cream. It's going to smell of something. It's got a smell of something. It can't just be no smell at all that doesn't exist it's got other products in it and to be honest i love that smell i love that sun cream smell i really really do it it just reminds me of holiday like and i love being romantic of holiday because we can't go on any right now but it reminds me of holiday and i really really like that about it so i don't mind the fact that it's fragrance free and smells of the bare basic that is sun cream which is basically the product within the bottle but, you know, if you do like a fragrance sun cream, which I do sometimes on my skin, I love like Hawaiian Tropic scented sun cream on my body. Um, not so much my face, but on my body, I do. Just because ugh, it's just holiday smell, isn't it? And it is what it is. I love Nivea for that reason. Reminds me, it takes me back to being like eight, nine, ten on all duty family. So I do think everyone likes the fragrance of like those sort of sun creams. But if you're not good with fragrance on your skin, this would probably be a much better pick. So the last section of this review is how it sits on the skin, basically the finish of the product, whether that be under makeup and without me. So when it first goes on the skin, like I showed you earlier, it leaves a nice dewy finish. And that dewy finish does last all day, I'm gonna be brutally honest, it really, really does. I noticed I had a gorgeous highlight on the cheekbones. It was just an all round nice finish. Now, another thing that I wanna mention about the finish, there is no white cast. And I have done my research for anyone who's watching this video who is a darker skin type. Because I'm not dark skinned, it's very hard for me to promote products for anyone who is darker or deeper skin tones. I just can't do that. So what I do do is I do have a little nose around to see if people are liking this product who have a deeper, darker skin tone. And to be honest, there was rave reviews from quite a few people that really, really like this sun cream because it doesn't have a white cast on, on their skin either. Because there's ones that I don't think have it but because I am so pale. White isn't that much of a different colour to my skin. So for me to have a white cast, it's got to be thick. It's got to be really, really, really thick because I'm so pale. But obviously any like my Asda SPF one I know has a white cast on da deeper, darker skin tones. This one doesn't. There was rave reviews about it. A lot of deeper, darker skin tone people were saying that this is absolutely fabulous for not having a white cast. So I just wanted to let everyone know about that now. But the finish underneath makeup, it seemed to sit underneath makeup really, really nice. It did 
it did move a little bit as the day was going on and for that reason I still prefer me as the SPF 30 mattifying sun cream because that seems to just with makeup it just seems to cling to the makeup and it doesn't budge on my skin i found this did move just ever so slightly especially wearing masks and things i found this made it a little bit easier for the makeup to move but it still sat nice like the makeup still sat nice on the skin even if it did move it didn't like break down into like clunks or little clunks of it like it was it was still nice i will say one thing about this i noticed that it's really good for awakening the skin so of a morning i found that if you had dull tired skin this had such a nice glowy dewy element to it that it woke your skin up you looked more awake it definitely stays sticky though throughout the day if you're not wearing makeup i noticed like hairs would stick to my face more it was just a lot more stickier it didn't that stickiness didn't go like it doesn't go when you've got no makeup on so that's something i would like to mention to everyone if you are wanting if you don't like that feeling then i don't know if you're gonna like this i did swap out my moisturizer of the morning for this i didn't use anything else i used my serums and then i went straight in with this it is highly hydrating extremely hydrating you would have to have extremely extremely dry skin for you to maybe then still go in with another moisturizer i just didn't think it was necessary but again i've done my research on anyone who's got oily skin and a lot of people are still raving about it for oily skin types so i still think you could give it a go and for three pound fifty at the moment if that offer's still on it's definitely worth a purchase seven pounds it's still worth a purchase but when something's on offer half price you can't go wrong and i did use this during the big heat wave in england and i had no issues not one i didn't burn didn't have any any and i like it was great on my face the spf for that so all in all i'm gonna give this a four out of five star deducted a point because of the fact that it was only three star uva rating and because my eyes just didn't particularly like it other than that i highly highly recommend this product okay so that's the video done guys i hope you like this video thank you so much for watching i'll see you soon bye